Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Christian Jewell, and I'm the manager of the Asia Pacific Design Library here at State Library. Firstly, I'd like to welcome you to a uh, more compressed version of the APDL uh, lecture series tonight uh, that we're presenting in partnership with the University of Queensland School of Architecture. So just the usual housekeeping things to kick off. If you have a mobile phone, can you please switch it off or put it on silent? And uh, if you are putting it on silent, we encourage you to uh, follow the conversation using the Twitter hashtag that we've created, APDL Lecture. It's an opportunity for you to uh, live tweet but also ask questions um, at the end. Bathrooms are located outside. Uh, you all would have seen them when you walked in. And we're also audio, record uh, audio recording tonight's lecture for our website. Uh, so if you do ask a question at the end and you don't want uh, to be included in that recording, can you please let us know? Um, so now, with no further ado, I'd like to welcome Peter Skinner to introduce tonight's speaker, Stephen DeJersey. Yeah, thanks, Christian. Um, my, my day job is at the University of Queensland, um, but for the last few years I've been involved in various things at the Institute of Architects. And one of the most enjoyable things that we do in Queensland is have a regional awards program. Uh, and as part of that, I, I was the state awards uh, jury chair in 2007. Part of that process was to go to each of the regions in Queensland and to, to look at work that was of outstanding um, character. Uh, and to give commendations and, and citations uh, and then the regional winners uh, continue on to the uh, state awards and the state winners go on to the national awards. So it's a lovely, lovely process and because I've been teaching for so long it, it gives me a chance to catch up with some people that I've known as students and to see how, the, how their work's going. Uh, so when um, my colleague uh, Professor Lewis Fiducci, the Professor of Design at, at UQ, started to put together this lecture program, I thought it'd be useful to invite people uh, back to Brisbane, some of our, our alumni who've been practising uh, in different parts of the state, different parts of the world. Uh, and so um, this evening Stephen will be presenting some of his work uh, from Townsville and next week uh, Stephen Guthrie and Lindy Atkin will be presenting their work from, from Noosa, from Bark. But the thing that really struck me uh, looking at the work in, uh, in Townsville was just how fresh the work that Stephen's office was doing. Um, and. Uh, and I realised just um, you know how difficult it is to to practice uh, in a, a regional centre, um, how difficult it is to get staff, how, you know, and and also how to how you have to be jack of all trades. You have to deal with all sorts of building projects, all sorts of building types. Uh, and the more I've seen of Stephen's work, the more versatile I realise he is, uh, both in the in the work, but also in in the uh, work he's done in Townsville with the um, urban. Urban Design Initiative, just trying to raise people's awareness of the potential of the city through his Lost Spaces program. So I'm, I'm, uh, I hope you enjoy Stephen's talk. I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to it myself. Uh, I'll just hand over to Stephen now, if you wouldn't mind. I'll just run through it. Uh, thanks very much, Peter. Um, and also just thanks to um, UQ and State Library of Queensland for sponsoring the event and so on. Um, I moved to Townsville in 1977 with my parents. My father was a, as a renal physician and um, he, I think in those days he was probably the first renal physician north of Brisbane. So, uh, you know, and now he's just retired and now there's three, I think there's three renal physicians taken over from his job. So um, in that respect, we've been there for quite a while, but and his role as a pioneering kind of person up in North Queensland is kind of interesting to me that um, that happened. Um, so they moved there in 77, I think, seven, so they were seven years old then, and in 78, um, they built a house um, using some architects um, uh, called Clayton Pemberton up there. Um, who I think in those days were sort of a you know a generational firm that had come out of other firms, so there was kind of one or two firms practicing and that sort of whittled away like that. Anyway, Clayton Pemberton designed this house, and um, you know that was obviously a milestone for me that we we um, had that happen. Um, so I went to Belgian Garden State School and then subsequently Townsville Grammar, and then attended University of Queensland in 1988 um, and. You know, under the tutelage of people like um, John Hawkins, Peter O'Gorman, and Britt Anderson. Um, in my fourth year at university, I met Louise, um, uh, and um, 
subsequent to university, I worked for people like Philip Follett and Geoffrey Pye. Um, so in 97, we, Louise and I got married and we travelled abroad. Um, and uh, I'll go to this first slide. Um, in October 2000, we bought this terrible looking house <laughs> in Townsville after we'd moved back there thinking we were travelling. We flew back into Cairns thinking we were travelling to Brisbane. And we ended up in, back in Townsville and bought this thing. Um, and at the same time, I think it was in about the, that three-month period, we had our first child, Oliver, and we also um, started the practice. So there we were on the front veranda of this thing, <laughs> struggling away. Anyway, um, just um, wanted to acknowledge Louise's involvement too because, I mean, it, it is pretty um, difficult to practice up, you know, regionally like that. And I think, you know, you, you kind of... To get staff is incredibly difficult, um, and so to have somebody like Louise, we were always, you know, talking about practice and what the projects are doing, and you know, every, all of our, all of the aspects of what happens, um, ups and downs, and all sorts of things. So Louise actually grew up in Cairns, um, and she went to Tasmania to study um, performance violin. Um, so I guess I don't. I know University of Queensland has a close relationship between architecture and music, but I, I think that probably you know follows through a little bit. Um, and then I met her at University of Queensland when she was doing a diploma in education there through a mutual friend. Um, so just move on to um, just give you a brief idea of the what towns the climate in Townsville. Um, it's a dry tropics area, so it's not. Kansas wet tropics and Townsville's dry tropics. So we get this really intense uh, wet season where it dumps down rain for a, a few months. Um, everything turns bright green. So we obviously bought this around um, around the Christmas period, um, and and then it just then for the probably about nine months of the year it's very pleasant weather. Uh, it dries out and then slowly over that period it just gets browner and browner until you know people start saying it's Brownsville instead of Townsville. So, um, it's uh, just I write here that it's t-shirts and shorts all year all year round basically. The the summer period's quite you know it's intensely hot. Um, it's hot but very humid, so you, it's getting up to 100% humidity um, and. Uh, obviously, that has you know all of those things have vast impact on on what we're building um, and what we're designing. I think another comment is the sun. The sun is the sun through that three month period is so um, you know you just don't like standing out in it at all. So if you're walking down the street, you'll just jump for shade straight away. So it's either solid shade or you're out exposed to that. So there's no kind of Level where you can you can uh, walk through dappled light and appreciate that it's just intense or not. So um, anyway, um, the, in the build the building industry up there too is quite difficult. So you know you, you try to do this this as an example I guess is the slab on ground mentality. We've got lots and lots of houses that are slab on ground. Uh, concrete masonry um, and timber trust roofs. So that has a vast economies of scale, which obviously um, affects what we do as well, you know, even in the commercial sphere. So um, there's that side of it. And then the other side of it that I find difficult is that if we do a shadow line detail or something like that, it's like, oh, well, we don't do shadow lines, we only do quad cornices. So you know, you've got to do quad cornices and if you buck up then you're sort of like, oh, this is going to cost you a fortune. So, you know, you are always trying to pursue things that achieve something better, but you've also got to be wary of, of that sort of stuff going on. Um, if you don't detail fully rainwater goods, then you sort of end up with PVC pipes twisting and turning all around your buildings like roller coasters. Um, So I've got, I just, tonight I just wanted to go through, um, what I've done is I've set up a series of houses, so uh, it's kind of interesting for me to have done this because it's really, I haven't done a lot of talking, but it's been 12 years in practice, 
Um, so I've managed to actually pull out loads of slides and review projects. So I was talking to Steve and Lindy before about this and just that you kind of, you know, you've got earlier works that you're throwing in there that you don't want to throw out. <laughs> Um, and the, you know, even the presentation techniques and everything like that in those are so outdated even over that 12 year period. So when we started practice I was drawing, tracing paper and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, and then obviously we're all on computers now but, you know, that generational sort of thing that's changing through. So I've set up some, a series of houses um, which date from right at the beginning of the practice and um, uh, I think I'll oh, write through, fairly recent, um, and hopefully you can pick up kind of some themes and things that are sort of plodding through and, and developing as we go through those houses. Um, I've put in two commercial projects, which both of those really deal with um, some fairly ordinary uh, road, arterial road um, problems. And then I've thrown in Martyrhide Park, which is was a, a hospital that was purchased by MARTA and we've been doing a lot of work redeveloping that. Uh, MARTA Pimlico and then Sacred Heart Cathedral Precinct and then I wanted to go on to um, Lost Spaces which is a, a website that we've set up um, dealing with urban design problems. Um, Yeah, so as Peter said, we do, I mean, it's just involved in quite a diversity of projects and I think that's, you know, one of the big things regionally that you sort of, you know, people need architects to do stuff and then you kind of end up with all sorts of strange jobs that you never thought you would do. I think, we, you know, when we first started we thought we'd be doing one-off houses and that would be it, but it's far from the truth that we've been doing that. Um, so this was uh, a house that we... Uh, but we started the practice on really um, called the Rice House. It was for a guy, David Rice, American fellow who was up there working for the zinc refinery, who subsequently got fired, so it didn't get out of out of um, the model stage. I think we got into DD stuff. But the lower level, the middle level is a. Um, can I get this cursor working? Oh, here we go. So the middle level has got. Um, the main living space is so an outdoor room and kitchen dining living th running through here and the, this is all a rock, massive rock slope so we'd actually picked out the piece of land for him in this new development and the views, this runs directly east-west with all the views straight out to Magnetic Island um, directly to the north um, so it's got main living spaces then a bedroom upstairs and bedrooms downstairs and the pool sliding all the way underneath of the of that from the rear. You see the swimming pool here. This is the road coming down with the driveway in car parks and entrance through the through the tongue of the building. Um, whilst that was going on we ended up with this project which was basically a, um, a very typical kind of um, uh, 1950s I think or 1960s um, timber government house that we raised and we built in underneath so we managed to get them this um, walkway through walkway through the property and, and get them to use the whole of the ground plane. Some shots inside and outside. It's, we were doing an outdoor room again in that one. Um, I think the breezes are quite good down there and we, they kind of catch a bit of that but um, um, uh, yeah, next project was uh, another house for up on the up on Yarrawonga or the hill, Castle Hill. The view from this is uh, directly through the um, mitre of the building, so it runs straight out to the north, and that's straight to Magnetic Island. Um, and this one's got a driveway coming up car park, and then weaving up through this tight staircase up to an outdoor room, and then kitchen, dining, living. Um, and bedrooms upstairs. Uh, that's the rear, so it was pushed back into the corner of the site, and that's it finished. Uh, that, so there's the view to Maggie Island and coming off the mitre of the building. 
Um, you'll see some of these projects. This was um, photographed by John Lincoln. So we flew him up. You know, this is one of the another difficulty we had. Wayne Petrie came up one time when we put in an award submission and. Wayne said to us, oh, you've really got to get some decent photography for these projects because we had, I mean, we just took some snaps and things and then shoved them on a board and it was a terrible bit of presentation. But anyway, and so we, we decided, oh, we'll get John to come up and photograph them properly. And, you know, it's a difficulty because we can't get access to those kind of people without, you know, obviously putting up their air flights and all that sort of thing. But I think, you know... Down here, I think John and, and a couple of the other guys are just photographing everything properly. So, um, anyway, at least we got them to, got him to come up and shoot this. Um, yeah, this is actually that's the airport out this way, and Magnetic Island's back behind us. Um, and then back on, the, so back on our own house. Um, uh, it has a, it had a terrace here. So this was the original rock, this rock wall that the previous owners had built. I think they'd lived in it three generations or something. So, um, and there was a there's a bomb shelter on the site and all this sort of thing. Um, but anyway, there's the plan of it. So there's the cottage there, and we extended it out this way um, and protected this the lovely tree here and the tamarind tree here. We also have subdivided it, so we split split the block off here and we've got another block sitting here. So the tamarind tree is kind of in danger and the kids all want to tie themselves to it <laughs> so that we don't cut it down. But anyway, um, yeah, so there's the extension. Um, again, it's an outdoor room. Um, and I think this might be the last one that we've got an outdoor room in, so... Um, we kind of used plywood for the new things and um, painted the old stuff. So, sorry, back on that slide. That's just you walk up through the the house and then you climb up the stairs at the rear and then you get an outlook back over this way out to the Pinnacles and Mount Stewart. But um, you know, it's a battle axe block, so we've ended up. I think we've got seven neighbours or something on this one. Um, and then um, the face, the, this is actually north this way. So I heard the other day that if um, architects face their houses the wrong, buildings the wrong way that they should be hung, drawn and quartered. <laughs> um, but we ended up fixing it by uh, this curtain that comes across. And actually in winter it's lovely because it, um, the, the gum tree here casts a its shadow onto the back of the curtain. Uh, this is another really quick little thing that happened on the way through, which was a, um, a, a house um, for some people that faced um, directly west, um, but it had great views out to the hill. Um, so we were going to make this great big screen um, across it that they could open and close. Um, and that was, you know, the basic section of it. So it was quite a steep site, so we had the cars and then climbing up to onto the terrace. Um, Kansas House, so this, this is another house on the hill again. Um, uh, it's somewhere in here, but it's the view straight up out to Magnetic Island. Actually, their view is sort of more up the channel, up this way in between Palorenda and Magnetic Island. Um, you can kind of see the development there. People spend a lot of money on the on the land, so and then they go and build these massive houses. And there's actually it's not a very good built environment to be honest. It's kind of, but the views are incredible. Um, so, Will Will and Andy came to us. I think they'd been through three architects before who hadn't managed to come up with schemes um, that they were happy with, and then. We went into that fairly nervously, <laughs> but Andy had early stages of MS at that stage, and um, so you'll find that we ended up using a. Oops, I'll just go back. the The house has a lift in it, so she can get up and down, um, and so it's three levels. It's an incredibly steep site. I think it's one. 
It's one metre drop in every two metres, uh, which I was told in Brisbane you're not allowed to build on sli uh, slopes that steep. Um, anyway, there's a lift in here. Oh, sorry, this is the main level, so you come in off the, off the road, um, car park, and then you enter through the house, and then you get these uh, magnificent views over the bay and to Magnetic Island. So we've got kitchen dining living around here. Uh, that's a kitchen in there and the dining table sort of just became the main focus in which actually they were very good and um, recognised that and they built this amazing table um, in that space. Um, and at this point actually this is interesting because we had quite a lot of discussions about what this outdoor room thing was and we realised that in fact you know we would actually don't really use outdoor rooms up there because you usually open up the whole house and the whole house is the outdoor room so um, we actually started getting rid of that that secondary outdoor room space. Um, so you can see that here, and that's kind of the veranda that runs along the front ended up becoming more of a kind of just a um, I don't know, like an eyelash, I suppose, where it was this kind of just shaded zone that people could walk along, but not particular, not really sort of sit there in a big communal gathering and opera. It gives you an idea of the um, steepness of the site and the models, the model. Um, so we had main living area, then bedrooms underneath, and the bedroom had this uh, pool structure out here, and then you could climb down, and the lowest level has a um, where he goes and makes sculpture underneath the house. Um, that's the view from the... Oh, so this is a cul-de-sac coming down. And we've tried to take this photo so you kind of get a bit of an idea of the view which is back this way. But there's also a sort of western view as well. Um, and that's it. You can see the view up there through the channel and the magnetic islands on the right. And then you can get an idea of the steepness of it. So that's the sculpture, terrace, the bedrooms and the pool. So the pool hovering, I don't know how high this is, I think it's about seven or eight metres or something. And then you kind of stand on here and look down. <laughs> it's, it's a ridiculous height, but anyway. Um, it's kind of, you know, I mean, it's sort of strange to have a single stor story on the top and then you've got, you know, three and probably four storeys really down to the bottom. I know when it was being built, the people down below, because they had scaffolding right out here, and they thought, my God, what's going on at the back? Um, and the, uh, we obviously up there we have to have geotech engineers on the thing that really, and these guys have just made it, it's all anchored to solid rock. But um, anyway, the pool. Um, this is another project that unfortunately hasn't gone ahead at this point, but I still live in hope that it will. That's, um, this is out on the river. Um, so Ross River um, goes back up towards Douglas, and then this is the famous Riverway complex that Cox's did. Um, and this is kind of the... Um, this is a standard kind of residential estate, but this block of land that we, we, were, we had to work on was um, a really special because it was sort of sitting there out on a, on a, on a, um, on a peninsula, really. Um, so I'll just go back... So it has views straight down across this great big expanse of uh, fresh water and then there's a weir further down here. So that's all flat and, and always like that. Um, and then it also has a bit of view back up this way and then it doesn't really have any view over there that they wanted. They just wanted to block, block that <laughs> and because of the noise and so on. Um, so we kind of... Anyway, we set up this kind of splat idea... Um, this house also picked up on the slab on ground thing, so we, th it's all built on a slab on the ground and the walls were supposed to be block work. So we're kind of trying to use those um, things and then also it was supposed to be just a simple framed purlin sort of roof. Um, so you can see our site analysis thing where we were trying to capture these views down the, down the river. And then also that was really great because we actually set it up, had the breezes coming straight across that water, straight into the house. So 
It was kind of the, you know, one of the ideal situations, really. Um, so the lower level, you were entering um, off this um, cul-de-sac street, uh, entering through between these kind of gaps. And then the, it was for a couple, and then they also have international boarders who, who go to the university staying with them. So we set it up so that they had their sort of area up at this end and then the boarders had their area at this end. Um, so you're going up the stairs. I think there was... I, can't, I haven't got the upper level, but there's... Um, bedrooms and, and studies. I think they had a study each and then a bedroom and then there were two bedrooms on this one. Um, and again, there's the views out to the to the river and back up this way, um, so on. Elevations and then the model. Um, so we were getting two-storey spaces through... Uh, where are we? Carport, yeah, through the lounge, and then this kind of interesting two-storey space wrapping around through the voids, through the gaps, and so on. Uh, and then back on, so this is an, on our subdivided piece of land. So I'm uh, hoping we can build this, but that's the that's the cottage that I showed you at first, the old cottage, and then our extension, and then the subdivision line runs through here. And that's the top piece of land. Um, and there's a, an unformed road reserve that is through here. So we've got this, this road, William Street comes around, turns onto Ernest Street, um, which is actually a real mess down there at the moment. And then there's a cul-de-sac coming in here where I think it's always blocked because all these people park boats down there or something. But there's... Um, so unformed road reserve. And then uh, we were fortunate enough... To, for the council to allow us to put in a three metre wide concrete strip to get us across to our block. Um, and then there's also subsequent, or recently, I think it was only probably two or three years ago, the council came through and decided they were going to put a trail down here, which, and then they went and built these great rock stairs down at the bottom of the trail that feed straight onto the top of our block <laughs> or the top of our driveway. So we've got this amazing kind of entrance to the to the hill reserve so that trail just goes it goes all the way up through the hill through the bushland up to the uh, castle hill road so we yeah we've done this uh i'll just go to this one set up this house and we're trying to use block work and timber trusses again um and the slab on the ground i mean we've got a bit of cut on this this one but um so it's a two-storey house. So you come in off the mat, off the upper level. I'll just go back. Car park, cars, and then through this main area. So then you're walking out towards the view out to Mount Stewart and the Pinnacles. And then the breezes should come across this way into the house. And then there's a two-storey void running through here. You can come through and then go down the stairs um, and bedrooms through here. Um, and again, we haven't used an outdoor outdoor room because we're just saying, well, no, this is the outdoor room space, this whole thing, and if we decide we want to open it up, we will, and if we close it down for air conditioning, which is what you end up doing um, in summer, um, although not ideal, but, you know, that that's just the nature of the beast up there, <laughs> then you can close it down and use it still in the same way. Uh, and the, so the... The, this one shows the, the block work, so we're trying to set up this... Um, uh, there's a lot of this kind of um, expanded metal, I don't know if you've seen it, but expanded metal screens that float, are floating around in places on public schools and all this sort of stuff in Townsville. So we're trying to use that stuff on this, on this west-facing wall um, to shield that block work from from the sun. So if we can shade the if we can use the block work and just basically shade it then it should be fine for the environment. But if we leave it exposed to the sun then it's just going to heat up uh, with thermal lag. So so that's what that is. Um, and we've used that on two faces on there. Um, and then the the block work comes up as walls and then we're going to use timber trusses and then uh, this has developed a lot since then but we're shaping the underside so rather than building a timber truss where you pitch the top of it, we're inverting that and putting the, the flat top cord and then shaping the bottom cord. So just trying to tap into that, um, that local 
um, industries rather than just ignore them and think that we should just build lightweight structures everywhere. I think we've got a responsibility to try and change that. Um, okay, so this is the first of those commercial projects. So Fenwick's and um, Fenwick's is there's a uh, it's kind of a main road running through here and Fenwick's had this old shop front on it, have had that for, there for years. Um, this is a two-lane main road with a railway line beside it, so that's the main railway, the line that goes from Brisbane to Cairns, basically. Um, and then the other thing here is that Fenwick's actually across the road had their main competitors, Curry's, who sell the same kind of gear, so... They were kind of feeling like, oh, we're, we're a bit ripped off here. We'd better do something about it. Um, so they were hidden by all these trees they, um, and the railway line. So um, I think this was pretty early on in the practice, so um, hand-drawn drawings. So that was the um, elevation. We decided to... Um, I might just jump forwards a bit because... We did this model fairly quickly, and it was basically built. We had a, the boundary line was running through out here, so it was actually about a metre outside of where their concrete facade was. So we basically thought, well, why don't we build it out and then make it an illuminated um, shop front? And that was so that was the model. And then this was a picture, which is a pretty bad photo, but um, that's me holding a torch above it, so you could see that it was lit up, and they could see Fenwick's. So. And that's so construction shots of the trusses. So they were just standard timber trusses bolted to the face of the concrete. Um, and that's what we ended up with. And yeah, John John Lincoln's has shot these again, but that's down the main road, down the street. The main road is the one coming this way, but you can see what it's doing. And then they did this for their Christmas card. <laughs> they were very proud of it that year. <laughs> um, so Fen uh, onto SportsMed. Um, uh, Peter knows this building, but it's out on, um, where are we, Thurungau Drive. Out, so it's out here. So that's Castle Hill, Ross River coming all the way up here. And they're on this kind of, um, it's two lanes each way, this road. Um, and, you know, when Thurungau was its own city, it was kind of close to, close to well, there's, there it is, Thurungau Central, so that's where the big shopping centre is and Riverway and so on. So we were on this feeder road for that. Um, we also, when we started this project, we came in and the council had moved from, we had, they used to have, you know, all these little houses along this street and... They were telling, they were allowing people to build commercial, you know, developments on there. But they were telling everybody that they had to keep their commercial developments back from the road. So all, all that was happening was that everybody was just putting all these car parks out the front, keeping the buildings right back, and then, you know, nobody. And then they'd stick these massive great signs out on the street. So we were fortunate enough to be able to convince them that we should build out to the street. Um, so. Uh, so this is a plan that we ended up with. Um, when we started the project too, Steve uh, Sartori had only the one block of land. Um, and so we actually, behind this scheme is probably another five other schemes um, for that single block of land. Um, and then they finally realised, oh, we better buy another block of land so we can fit the car parking. So that's what they, they were lucky enough to do, to um, approach the neighbours and buy that block of land. It also happened that there's a sewer line that runs straight down here. Whoops. Um, there's a sewer line that runs straight down just adjacent the boundary. So that kind of set things up fairly quickly for us. Um, uh, so we set up the car. This is two lanes each way. So we, wanted, we really wanted the building to do something in terms of addressing that street. Um, we also had to get the cars off the street. So, and give them a safe place. So we set up a car park here and we set up this um, longitudinal axis so we could um, break off into, into the various spaces. Um, 
the plan's also a really long kind of journey as well because he started with just himself and then he ended up getting all of these other partnerships. So in fact this section here is a podiatrist um, and then Steve's this physio practice bit is at the back here, through here. And then there's a gymnasium for um, Fit Solutions or a, a personal training business. And then there's a speculative piece that runs through, uh, runs through here in there sort of thing. So it's kind of all of these businesses and then it's quite amazing because it's, it's quite a real hub of activity out there and then they all kind of, they're all these young fit people and stuff and they all bounce off each other and, so, you know, you go out there and you sort of feel really unhealthy. <laughs> but anyway. um, so we also did some things on this where we split, these are, we started talking about these in terms of concrete masonry pods. So there's one through there through there and through there. So most of those are basically dumb black boxes really, although we punctured the, put some high level windows in them and things like that. And then these two pieces, we were talking about them as being um, more like, you know, furniture. Um, so they've got the reception desks in them. And then we utilised, so we're sort of splitting off the bits and pieces and then we split off the glazing. So it was a folded form of glazing. Um, and then we had the path so we kind of ele made it, everything into elements. And then we added the roof. So we, the roof kind of jumps up. So it jumps up at the back where, the, where we needed the volume over the gym. And then it drops down through, that, through the main area. And then it folds up at the corner um, to give some height to the road. And then it actually folds back down on the back corner of it. Um, our kids called this, roof, call this building zigzag, which I think is probably a much nicer term. Um, oh, just they're just design development things. Um, this is just to to show you that it's actually a very simple structure. So it's concrete slab on ground block work, and then there's just basically skillion roofs. Um, and then this is the tricky bit was here where it joins up. Um, the model, and then John came and took the photos for us. Um, actually, just on that, the the whole of the roof actually drains down to these two spitters, and you know, in Townsville, there's this kind of massive water coming once a year, you know, for a short period each year, which you get so scared of because <laughs> you never know if your roof or your gutters are working until that period. Um, so we kind of put in measures like this where it just basically dumps, and I kind of suppose that's kind of a bit of a celebration of that rain as well. So there's this dumping straight into these pits along this back that's back out to the street inside in the gym um, okay so next projects um, I wanted to talk about Marta um, Hyde Park I mean we've been doing work for a long time at uh, Marta Pimlico, which is over here, and then they they went in 2007. They went and purchased this um, little hospital that was started by um, the Bennett family, and subsequently purchased by Wesley. And then Marta ended up buying it, um, and so we've been working there for quite a while uh, since then um, on bits and pieces for them. Uh, I'll just jump to this one first. So this is what it was like when we got it got the site so there were two there's a, a physio practice here and another little timber house and then there's the block of land goes their block of land actually goes like this around there so there's buildings next door and then the, when uh, when it was first built the Bennett family actually built the building here and it was actually directly connected to this hospital building and then they split it off they sold this piece and then they sold this piece to Wesley so and the link was still there when we got to it and the entrance was off um, the rear of Oxford Street. So this is the main, Bayswater Road is the main road really. And then they'd, for some reason, they'd end up putting this entrance out the back. Uh, and then just to give you an idea of what, what it was, 
what we were dealing with. It's just a concrete um, slab on ground. Uh, it's a blockwork um, primary um, structure with a brick veneer and timber trust roofs with great big gables everywhere. Um, so as soon as Marta had bought it, we quickly stepped in and said, well, they needed to get, because I wanted to make it into um, uh, women's and children's hospitals, so we had to get all of the obstetrician gynaecologists off Pimlico over to here. So um, we, and then we also had to do renovations and stuff within the hospital, but the main thing that they needed was to get the consultants over here. So we quickly stepped in and did these kind of this four-stage master plan for them, which was pretty basic, but um, got got some thinking going. Um, so this was the first stage where we um, tried to get as many cars in here as possible and then built a building over the front here. Um, and the second stage where we kept the car park in there and just punched knocked this down and got car parking out the back so at least we kind of started to set up an entrance sequence and building over the top um, and then this so this is the lower level and upper level so the lower level same car parking deal and then this was speculating that maybe they could buy this property um, and start building some stuff out there and then we said on the oh, and then they also were going to buy this property here um, and then we, that meant that we could extend the consulting suites and then we could also start building straight over the top of the existing building. So it's kind of high level thinking, well, these old buildings aren't going to really be um, kept for that long, so we need to put in place some kind of master plan for them. And then uh, the next stage where it was kind of massive buildings and pulling out everything that was underneath. And then that was, this is a really... Um, I'm embarrassed about these ones now, but this was an idea that um, with the new building we could just rebrand that or we could just build a new building there and everybody could see it and know that Marta, you know, Marta had purchased this thing and that, you know, they were making their stance on the, on the whole place rather than it feeling like a village sort of nursing home thing. Um, so this is actually pretty current. Um, so we've actually managed to build the car park. At this point in time, we've built the consulting suites at the front. We've knocked the driveway through. Um, so we've set up an entrance um, to the consulting suites and so on here. But the entrance to the hospital proper is still out the back, um, which we've got a scheme in place to fix that. And then we've set up the services, um, via services court through here. Um, so stuff comes in public, sort of feeding through here to the car park and then feeding back, pedestrian feeding back along to the two entrances. Um, and, the, yeah, well, that's the pedestrian entrance that we're illustrating there. Um, oh, these are the DA drawings. So the DA drawings were um, for the consulting suites upper level but um, just open underneath, so it's supposed to be sort of like a, a massive port cachet um, so that's where we started and that's what got built. And then you can see the, all the hoardings still here and then they said, oh, we would better build in underneath because Queensland X-Ray came along to them and said, oh, we, we'd like to take that out as a tenancy. So we ended up, this is, this is their lower level now, um, fully fit out um, with a PET scanner and a normal radiology practice. Um, and then you can see the driveway coming through and pedestrian access feeding back and then there's this kind of forecourt area running right through here that feeds this tenancy plus all of the upper level and we've still actually got an entrance right down here, tucked in here for oncology. Um, that, so this is the upper level. Um, the other thing with this building is that it has, it actually this, from this level it has great views back to Castle Hill across all of these roofs. So you'll see in the later picture that that was all set up. And then there's also views to the south to, um, to Mount Stewart. Um, these are all individual, so that's an individual tenancy there and they're typically set up so that there's an entrance. The glazing, we use the same glazing as the system as Sportsmed, um, but in this one, the entrance doors are tipped towards, as you come in, they're tipped towards the entrance way 
and then this is actually a rear door because the, the obstetrician gynaecologists come out, shoot out here um, and race down the stairs to deliver a baby. So, and they don't want to be seen by any of their patients. Um, uh, and so this, this is where we're up to, basically. Um, we also managed to build this screen, which is a wayfinding device. So it's, it's, it um, shades the uh, eastern glazing. It conceals the gable. And then it also just sort of tapers down to try and lead people back onto that driveway because the driveway is still, it's not, you know, it's quite tight still. So, uh, and then, sorry, at the beginning of it, which is probably one of the most important bits, is their massive sign. So you can see it again. So there's Castle Hill looming in the background. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, Queensland X-ray down here and all the consulting suites at the top. It's actually a... Um, uh, it's not a very nice door. It's actually a door that's for um, patients who are um, have had their pet treatment done and they're still hot. So they're walking out there with, you know... Um, so back down and then view various views. Looking back through, so this is the um, forecourt sort of entrance system. Uh, and that's our big um, blue tiled walls. I tried to tell the CEO that we use blue because it was Mary's colour and, you know, it's a Catholic hospital. So. <laughs> um, and then, the, yeah, so there's, this is the walkway. We ran a bench seat down there so that, the, you know, if the mums wanted to sit out there with their little bubs then they could do that. Um, that's one of the tenancies. And the view to Castle Hill, which is fairly neatly cropped, <laughs> I think that is in actual fact um, eye height so and then we found that this stuff on the web that was kind of using our building as a, I don't know anyway I don't know how that happens but she didn't look like she was going to be in labour that's for sure um, uh, oh now this one is um, moving on from that which is actually a um, a new entrance for the hospital. So this is the main part here, really. It has a whole lot of other bits and pieces through the rest of the hospital, but um, building a main entrance to the hospital and it all affects the immediate area here. So we'd set up a new reception. Oh, sorry, that's the existing <coughs> building line. And then there was a new reception and various meeting rooms and all that sort of thing, um, like antenatal classes through here. And then... Uh, the new bit of extension that we did was here with a bit of wrapping block work again, which we'd kind of use that out at the front. Um, so it was supposed to be white rendered concrete masonry um, and then a chapel and then the entrance structure and then a roof coming around here to pick up so you could drop off and pick up undercover. Uh, so these are... Main thing is the views here. So this is from the rear, so you're seeing the main structure and then the old, so the old building. And then at least we kind of built a bit of volume so that it would um, be a prominent marker for the site. And then this is a view driving through from, from the Bayswater Road entrance. Okay. So um, back over to Marta Pimlico, I'll probably try to go through this a bit faster, but um, we've been doing work here for quite a long time. Probably, um, I think we got a call to work on stuff over there probably about six months after we started practice, so it's kind of um, fortuitous for us really. Um, we've done a lot. These, these two buildings, there's two buildings here. This one's a three-storey one and there's a four-storey building here. So it's got, I think there's 200 ward rooms in there. Uh, there's eight operating theatres on third level. Um, but these are two pretty good buildings and uh, we have also, and we've gone on to do master planning works within here 
um, where we demolish this stuff, demolish this and build a new building through here. Um, and that's all part of, because uh, we keep on going back and knocking out and refitting stuff in these two buildings. So as they adjust, we've done, you know, cath labs and endoscopy suites and all this sort of stuff. So that, and they keep on changing things with changes in technology or, or replacement machines, all that sort of thing. Um, so these, these new buildings are supposed to be an expansion, oops, an expansion of that. Um, and all of the services do all follow that sort of same route. So they've got chill water lines running out through here around the circuit, basically. Um, so these were these were things which this, these are actually pretty old, but um, from an early design report. So just saying, we really thought that this needed to maintain its status as a courtyard. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, that it's just. Well, it's got a single-storey building down this end of it and then a car park at this end of it, which the doctors basically park all their flash cars in, so it's not a green courtyard at all. Um, and then this is the mar so this is a master plan for that um, ground level. So we had a uh, Fulham Road, this is the main road, then we have a drop-off, um, and then we were connecting up a glazed cloister around here so that we could at least establish a series of vertical um, movement paths uh, with lifts and stairs through here and here. Uh, there is another one in there, but it's clinical. And anyway, um, sorry, and that another main thing of this is probably that there's consulting suites coming off this side. So we had hospital and then consulting suites. Um, this was also, I want to show you this building because we're just actually finishing that one. Um, so these master plan things were actually. Um, extended so that we could um, show this in it. Back on the hospital here, so you're seeing what I'm talking about there with their hospital wards, so you can see this circuit that we're continuing um, and private consulting. And level three is the same, so that's the theatre's level, but there's still wards coming down this way. And four, where We've only got this building that goes up to four, but these two new ones would keep going at that fourth level. Um, so back on that corner site, we had um, um, Kevin, uh, actually a guy in my year, Adam Max, his father was an architect in Townsville, and he actually did this building and this building. He used to do a fair bit of work at the hospital. Um, and I still remember this, being, this building being built... Um, and I think it was 86 or something like that, and the guy who was working on it was a Danish architect and he managed to, to set up this whole curve so that there weren't any cut bricks in it. So I was impressed as, at that. Um, and then Kevin also built this one, which is a single storey and being used as a consulting suites building. This building um, was commonly discussed as being demolished so, which was quite, I thought it was a terrible shame because it was actually a pretty decent sort of building. Uh, it was just sort of run down a bit. Um, so this project that we had was, it's a clinical training facility, so the uh, hospital managed to get funding um, to um, increase clinical training capacity. I think that's what the term was. Basically create a whole lot of classrooms and teaching spaces um, and then they've gone into cahoots with JCU. So um, what we've done is we've set up, we've reclaimed and refurbished this building and then we've set up um, through this link uh, up, you go up um, to the upper level and we've got basically a dumb set of classrooms and tutorial and office spaces and a consulting sort of um, teaching room and then staff and student facilities. Um, oh. And then, so... Oh, sorry, the other thing that I haven't mentioned there is that the lower level... Um, so that's um, linking, so across here, horizontally, and then vertically across the top. And then this is supposed to come back as consulting suites and then more built in later on as more consulting suites. 
So repeating on the Hyde Park problem. And then at that stage, this is supposed to connect up and be set up with consulting suite sort of um, arcade, I suppose. So we end up off the main, off the streets, we'd have a consulting suite entrance and then the training and then all of that feeding back into the hospital via this. Uh, so that's... We wanted to keep it... We made it red brick because this was red brick and the other building was red brick and we didn't want to make any um, distinction between um, this as a separate building to that um, uh, because it's supposed to be a background building, really. It's not the main entrance of the hospital, so we don't want it, didn't want to play it up. Um, so we kept it as red brick, and, and the whole hospital actually is red brick. So, it's, um, And we enjoyed mucking around with this um, entrance and chopping the building around a little bit so we could... Um, That's actually kind of... This is actually an accident. That wasn't... I didn't know that was going to happen until we started building, so... Anyway. But that's that, actually... Let's see, that. Mount, that's Mount Stewart Pinnacle. So, and then it's got a red tiled roof to match our red brick. Um, uh, another thing here is just these hoods. Um... The, the sun is so intense up there and you're just basically trying to, you know, you get in trouble if, from a mechanical engineer if you don't fully shade your glazing. So we actually don't have a vast amount of glazing in this building except internally and then um, we've shaded all of that as well. The, the old building had... Um, had some horrible, you know, white sort of timber frame stuff. So we ended up just cleaning all of that up and relayering it with our matching. Um, this is where that arcade's supposed to link through. So building in underneath there, and we've set all of that up so it's ready to take. Um, probably, I think if it's if it is built in underneath, we want this to be a different kind of brick. Um, uh, and then internally with that triangular staircase. Back up. So this is a, actually this was during constructions, but that's all green grass now. And then the view out the top of the window, so you're seeing the old um, Kevin's old building. And then you're looking straight down the passage to a student space. This was a kind of difficult one for me because I um, was trying to push to try and make a bigger space through here, so that we could kind of have that, um, you know, space where people interact and all this sort of thing. And this this hospital said, oh no, we don't want to waste the space. So I worked quite hard to try and sneak a whole lot of glazing in there and get um, interaction across. So you'll see all of, the all of these doors are glass and then there's all glass um, to all of the rooms. And then so you can look right through the whole building basically. We were actually we were lucky enough to even be able to select the, the furniture on this, so that was quite good that we could keep the black and white thing going. We didn't choose this guy. <laughs> um, and this is inside the old auditorium, so um, you know that I thought that the problem with this thing was that we had this red brick, which is actually just confused by this kind of overlaying of white lines and stuff. Um, and at the same time, I thought that the ceiling just looked terrible because for some reason. But when we did that, this, the ceiling is just looks brand new. So, and I think that what we achieved was just to re-emphasise that line and the fold of that ceiling. Uh, and then that this is just out the back, so we've cleaned all of that up and redirected people through there. So this is supposed to be a new servery kind of kitchen, so they put stuff on there, and then they come out after the lecture and have drinks there, and then they can go out onto the courtyard, courtyard space. Uh, and there we are back at that one. Um, have I got time to keep on going, or am I really going to get shot? Yeah, it's just... Yeah, we probably need to wind up a little bit. Oh, 
Okay, I'll go for a bit fast. I might, I might, um, I'll just try and skip Oliver's cloister um, a bit. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, so uh, there you go, Peter. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, this is a, in the city again with um, Sacred Heart Cathedral, and um, we were approached by the pr- a priest there, um, Father Humphreys, and he had a um, an incident where um, a couple called him out of the blue and said, oh, that they'd just lost their baby and this baby had died overnight and he went and spoke to them and stuff and then subsequently they said that they wanted to make a donation to the church and he didn't know what that meant, whether it was a plaque or something or what. Um, but anyway... Father Glenn wanted to do something that was going to be useful for the church. So um, this is actually the design competition draw. I'm just jumping around a bit here, but this is the design competition drawing of the facade of the cathedral. And all of that's built except for this massive bell tower. Um, And then there's uh, recorded stories that you could still see the facade. It loomed over the city um, when Ross when people came in on Ross Creek. Um, So this spire is yet to be built, but I'll talk about that more further as we go. Um, So that's the cathedral. The initial cathedral was down on the Strand and actually got washed away in a a storm, and so they rebuilt, they built it here. Um, But for me, actually, one of the most important things here is these rock walls. So they actually built these huge rock walls um, and to create a level platform and then built this um, great cathedral on top of it. Um, so that's the cathedral there. I think you can sort of vaguely make out the road, uh, roadway and then the rock walls. And then this was the an, um, original bishop's residence right next door to the cathedral. Um, yeah, old shots. So this is it now, and a view from the back. Um, and it has, um, just before we started there, they'd just done a redevelop or a refurbishment of the cathedral, and as part of that, um, they wanted car parking, and this was their solution to put this um, big expanse of concrete car parking out here. Um, so there's issues with, there's a f- quite a few issues with this car parking and, and uh, driveway access. For example, you drive in here and you car lights just point straight across the altar um, as you drive in, so that's a bit of a disaster, really. Um, yeah, oh, you can see it again, so the rock, these rock walls um, and the car park and these um, hideous units up the back. But, and then you're getting all of this, and this is actually... These ones here were actually built on land that the church sold to developers, so... <laughs> We're kind of, um, these are views from um, the city below, so straight up Stanley Street, and there's a series of heritage kind of buildings up here. So Dance North and the TAFE building, um, and then there's another um, extension to the TAFE College here, which is just a straightforward white um, building. Uh, this is a view to the city below. Um, so one of the things here with, which we were trying to set up was, or acknowledge at least in Oliver's Cloister, was that we had this amazing site which is, you know, you had to travel to it and, and it was on a terrace that was sitting above the city. Um, and it actually is quite, you know, even from a climatic point of view, it's great because you get these wonderful breezes coming across here. Um, and then you get, that's, uh, north is out this way. So um, you're also getting... Uh, western the shadows from the hill also shade the site so um, so with Oliver's Cloister we had there's a staircase that runs up um, this kind of split staircase that was existing there's a rock wall that runs through here and there's a rock wall that runs through either side there's actually car parking buried in underneath of here um, and then there was a private uh, secret staircase that runs up the back so what we thought to do was to put um, to ut- uh, Father Glenn wanted to use he wanted to create a shaded space out here so that we could have you know that people could have um, 
have after mass events um, in the shade out there. Um, they've got a kitchenette. In, they had a kitchenette in here already. So anyway, so we we had a we also had a boundary line through here, so we could keep out of DERM by if we just built on this area and not over that line. So whilst you know whilst that was there, actually I don't think it actually needed to extend over there anyway. Uh, we set up. So we had the church's axis and an axis running back. We set up an axis running back through this way and I managed to convince the um, bishop to relocate the Sacred Heart statue um, out to here, facing back in. So there was this kind of end to the axis, even though it's, it also still obviously goes on, but that sort of provides the finishing boundary. Um, and then there's a statue of Mary sitting here um, on this axis and then there's a blank wall a wall with a quote on it and this wall actually shields the view of that staircase but also contains the quote um, and then there's a bench seat that runs all the way along here and then the shade structure or the roof goes right over all of that uh, so that's our original concept scribble um, which by I think that was produced in about 10 minutes because he had to rush off to see the, the people if they'd agree to this. Um, and there's the car parking underneath that I was talking about, the, the stairs going up either way, and you can see all the rock walls and so on. Um, this was another um, sales pitch, I suppose, where we could say, oh, you could have functions here. And this is, these are all seats with long tables. So I don't know how many there are, but there was about 100 or something. And then this was another option of how you could use that, that for a function again and you know, have, you'd have Mary at the end of the table as well. This is at the, so this is at the opening of it, um, or the blessing of it, uh, with the bishop walking through there. And um, This is another function. We sort of snuck up there and took some photos while we were... It's interesting here. See how people aren't standing on the, on the sunny bit? They all are contained within that. So that's a really typical kind of thing in Townsville that you sort of chase the shade. Um, yeah, I mean, it's quite extraordinary, really, isn't it? I mean, kind of, and then... Um, uh, talking about photographers, Scott Burrow, I was driving around town, actually was on my way back from, to the office from lunch and Scott Burrows was there photographing another building and I said to him, oh, you better come up and take some photos for me. And so I was fortunate not to have to pay for his flights and everything. But, um, so Scott took all these shots. Y you know, you can see the the thing that we were trying to set up where it's above the city below and so on. And that's it sliding in in front of the bishop's, the old bishop's house, which is now used as a diocesan, diocesan offices. Uh, and then um, that project, um, Father Glenn came to us subsequently and said, oh, I've got a storage problem on site. <laughs> so... I said, oh yeah, and, and then, but at the same time we got wind that there was this, um, they were speculating on doing a, a commercial building on the site as well, and um, because they had managed to get, um, this through the sale of some property, they managed to get some money, uh, sale of property in Abergawry, which is a, so a cane farm, they had money sitting there that they wanted to put in, invest into a building, so... Um, we kind of snuck around a little bit. Um, this, so this is analysis from, uh, you know, we had a, several meetings about the storage issue, but it eventually ended up in doing this scheme. Um, so these, these are site analysis things, saying significant heritage artefacts on the site, so obviously the buildings, but also, as, as I was saying, the rock wall, and we put Oliver's Cloister into there as well. <laughs> And then the native landscape at the back, and there's also some exposed um, native rock and staircase down, right down here at the bottom. So, um, 
sorry, I didn't explain that very well, but that's Stanley Street and Will Street, and the church has all of the land down to there, and this piece of land is very steep, and this is where they built that concrete car park that I was showing you before. Um, and then this was an, a site analysis thing again about components contributing towards this idea of podium and how they, so the terrace, the threshold, so walking up through those thresholds, and then this thing that is a real problem with the car parking being massive concrete car parking all the way around the site. Um, and then these are, sorry, that previous one was views from the site, but we've already seen that, and then these are views back through the site for the rear of the site and things that are causing a bit of problem in terms of this um, terrace. Again, views to this building and views to that building. Um, and then another component of it is just protecting these. Well, we've got the views to the building and the views of the hill from various locations up that street. Uh, and this were these two these diagrams are our strategies towards um, resolving that. Um, so designating this as sacred space, and we want to not have cars driving all over it, and we want to also try and protect uh, to not have units overlooking it really, and then car, trying to put, trying to get the car parking back onto some sensible kind of placements. Um, so we set up straight away, well, we, let's, if we build something here and we build something here and we build something here, at least those things will block the views to the back um, and, you know, uh, that'll heighten the awareness of this being a, a terrace. Um, and then we also wanted to draw this line here so that we could protect this vista of the church. Um, I also didn't say before, but this... Here is the bell tower, which was never was only built to I think it's three stories at the moment, so it would go up another probably another four or five stories I think. Um, so this is this is our scheme uh, for all of that stuff actually. So we had um, cars on two levels, and we were trying to set up side access, side access. And and then we set up a clo we're trying to convince them, oh let's set up a cloister here so that you could for processions and everything at least you could sort of come around under a shaded cover or or a you know, out of the rain. And we had a future extension here thinking, oh well if we could build that there then that would block that as well. Um, so the cloister in this bit have been dropped from the thing, but level five uh, level four was offices Level five was the bishop's residence, so that was another component of it that they were going to try and do this commercial office development, but also have the bishops and priests, and then subsequently priest residences in there as well. Um, and then our strategy towards the um, terrace, oh yes, the sections, and then we were overlaying the bell tower in. Um, you know, try and just try. I'm not saying that that would ever be built, but at least try and protect that that possibility or intent of the initial design. Um, so these are these are actually the DA drawings that were submitted. So there's a bit of um, development happened, design development happened there. Um, cars, office space office space on the next level two. Level three was all office space um, set up off the forecourt. Uh, more office space on level four and then the bishops and priests residences on level five. Yeah, those slides are all... I'm just going to flick through those. They're all just... You'll see some... You just pick up the relationships between the... And then uh, we produced these images fairly quickly, but seeing a staircase up and then, uh, you know, an idea that that bell tower would be built. Um, now, uh, this is another thing. This is, um, we were mucking around a bit um, 
Louise was trying to interject with some ideas about hoods and things for these windows, um, which I'll show. <laughs> um, so these are actually marketing drawings, so they move through another level of development, de design development, um, and they've been released onto the market to try and pre-commit um, pre some of the tenancy space. And then these are our hoods that was talk we were mucking around with. Um, and the, actually the proportions of these windows are all supposed to be matching or similar to the ones of the cathedral, so we were thinking, oh, the space, we could at least play on that idea. Um, and at that point, the, the marketing drawings ended up being a bit, a whole lot more developed because we realised that the security lines weren't really great in the previous scheme. So there's kind of a security line running through here and then a screen, is, so screen and screen, but still maintaining that whole um, idea of trying to get people to work through a... a um, a threshold or a tighter sort of stair space up to this main level. No, it's <laughs> Bell's hour looks kind of scary there. Um, and, well, you can see actually in this shot just views, there's distant kind of views out from the terrace. Um, oh, and then, well, subsequent to that, we're still going, we're going through a whole bunch more development now because the bishop's decided he doesn't actually want to live there. So, anyway, um, this is, uh, um, we started this project, it's a website, and it was born out of a whole lot of, um, we had just discussions and chats and things over the years, and there's a whole lot of ideas that we had that we didn't know, we thought that they would be great to illustrate, like they just were in our minds and we thought, oh, they'd be good to illustrate those things so that you can, um, you know, talk about them. And we thought, too, that there must be a lot of other people who have ideas about stuff like this as well for the urban environment. And it's also, I suppose, the other side of it was that it's a frustration that you can't um, comment on urban design things unless you're actually doing it directly with urban planners or as part of a process for a council or whatever it is. And yet I think the community has those, you know, not just architects, but I think a lot of people have um, thoughts about what our urban environment should be. So we sort of backed out of trying to say, oh, look, um, you know, we're not going to comment on private property or whatever. We're just going to say, oh, we're going to comment on public or lost, what we call lost spaces, so they're all sites that aren't, um, they're not owned by people, they're just sort of um, leftover spaces, I guess. So I'll give you an example. Of the, so the website's been set up, so there's, there's sites that we've chosen, um, and then there are um, proposals for those sites, and the proposals are also um, acknowledged, or the, the authors of those um, proposals are also acknowledged in that in it. So um, I'll just use this Sturt Street cutting one as an example. Um, uh, so Sturt Street cutting is I hope this works. Um, Fl you would have heard of Flinders Street. Well, Flinders Street runs through here, and this is Sturt Street um, running through here. And there's this massive cutting that was put in here. Uh, I think it was pre-wartime. Um, uh, as a, It was put in there as a quarry, basically. Um, I think that, I'm not sure this is working so well. Let's flick across. No. So anyway, you can go down this side. You go down here and you can see all of these images and then there's various comments within those. So they're all just site analysis stuff. Um, and then, like, this is, a, this is an image that we've sourced off the web and it actually shows, see Sturt Street now cut straight through here. So you can see the, the entrance to the quarry was actually off Appland Street and then it was kind of, this was unformed road. So you can, we kind of found a whole lot of images that were sort of interesting um, 
Here's another one that's interesting, actually. This, there's Sturt Street that was cut through there, and this bit of hill doesn't any longer exist, and that's actually where um, Storm Financial have built, <laughs> built their building. So, but anyway, that's, it's kind of interesting to go through that stuff. Um, and then for that, we here's an example one here of a proposal. So linking um, this proposal links. Uh, so there's Sturt Street cutting. This is Appland Street, and then this is actually Road Reserve as well. And so we said, oh, that's kind of crazy. Uh, we could link the hill, because this is really the only place that the hill comes down into the city. So we could link this, <coughs> the top of the hill, back down to the river. Um, and then to get, we needed to get from the road up to the top of the, top of the quarry, basically. So we thought, well, why don't we just propose a crazy staircase? Um, and then, yeah, so there's the section... Um, I'll go. I'm going to get, take you back to a different one. Okay. We've, I'll just show you one more. <laughs> um, where are we? Central Park. Ah, this one. Yeah. Um, so this was Denham Street Staircase. Um, Sorry, and it is. There's a set of stairs that comes down here that are a lovely little link. Um, and we thought, well, why don't we build some, you know, some structures over? That's the staircase there. So we were thinking, oh, at least we could celebrate that and provide some shade structures and seating possibilities and so on. So we did these quickly. Okay, so that's lost spaces. Okay, yeah. Thanks, thanks a lot, Stephen. I'm really sorry that we have to kind of clear everyone out um, before eight. Otherwise, it would have been great to have some questions. But um, I'm sure Stephen is happy to um, meet downstairs at the info zone level. And, and if anyone has any questions, they can speak to Stephen down there. But really, thank you. Uh, for sharing all of that amazing work, you know, uh, one lecture doesn't do justice to to the uh, impact that you've had in Townsville. So I think we've all um, really appreciated that. Um, please make sure you book in for um, Stephen Guthrie and Lindy Aitken next week from Bark Design on the Eventbrite, and um, for the rest of the series as well. And thank you all for coming, and we look forward to seeing you in the Design Library soon. So thanks.